Christian faithful commemorate Easter, President Bolatinubu has sent out his warm greetings to Christians in Nigeria and around the world, wishing them a happy Easter. In a statement signed by his special advisor on media and publicity, Adjirin Galali, President Tinubu says the sacrifice of Jesus Christ for humanity is an empathic lesson for leaders and all Nigerians to yield to selflessness and compassion and be steadfast in the pursuit of a united, peaceful and prosperous nation. The president of the Senate, Gosul Akpabio, is appealing to global leaders to promote peaceful coexistence in order to end the war between Israel and Hamas. Senator Akpabio was addressing journalists in Abuja after attending the International Parliamentary Union meeting in Geneva. He says, in the spirit of the Easter season, there's a need to end the war in Gaza. Senator Akpabio adds that the war in Gaza has security implications for the rest of the world, especially Africa. Well, after the war, the arms will still be on the ground all over. And some may find their way into Africa. Many have already found their way into Africa. See the Libyan experience and what happened in Niger and thereafter what happened in Baron said. The governor of Benue State, Reverend Father Heisen Thalia, has inaugurated the State Caretaker Committee of the All Progressives Congress. The committee is chaired by Mr. Benjamin Omakolo. The ceremony, which was held at the factional party secretariat in Makodi, was presided over by the chief of staff to the governor, Mr. Paul Biam. Mr. BM described the event as a historic one in the state's politics, just as he called on party members to unite. The All Progressives Congress APC in River State has thrown its weight behind President Bola Tinubu and his economic policies, as they insist the present administration does not deserve unsavory vituperations. At a news conference in Abuja, the chairman of the party in the state, Mr. Tony Okocha, says the onslaught on President Tinubu and the minister of the federal capital territory, Mr. Inyesu Wike, by some members of the People's Democratic Party is only a smear campaign. Some residents in River State have staged a protest to demand accountability in the award and execution of federal constituency projects in the 27 political wards of Ikwere and Mohua federal constituency. The protesters are asking the leadership of the National Assembly and the respective ministries and agencies to ensure that the award of federal constituency projects in their areas is in compliance with the Public Procurement Act to enable them know the companies handling what project and follow up on the progress of work. Thank you indeed, everyone, for staying with us. Some good news uh, about the, the state of the Nigerian economy. It's been a struggling trend for the economy for the past month, as we see some of the indices that are not looking so good, especially as it affects the average person. Um, tonight, we'll be getting some perspectives. If you look at the price of commodities generally, uh, those who even ask the question, yes, the Nigerian Naira is not doing well against the dollar, but how did it affect some products that are not, uh, that doesn't have anything to do with the dollar? Well, dollars seem to be affecting about everything. Uh, I don't feel so much air in the atmosphere. Uh, and jokingly, I told a friend, whether the dollar is also affecting the air that we bring, it, it seems so much that the humidity is still feeling different at these days. But, well, there's some good news. The dollar is, uh, the Naira is doing well in the last few days. The report that we're getting, the CBN today says that the Naira continued to record gains in the autonomous foreign exchange market. It traded about 1,300 naira to the dollar as against 1,611 uh, against the dollar in the second week of March. And the CBN has told Nigerians that there's been an inflow of over 1.5 billion U.S. dollars in the past few days. Uh, the CBN, according to some of the uh, information pushed out earlier today, uh, made uh, the allusion that uh, the data available to the bank indicates that inflows uh, resulted from a concerted effort to stabilize the foreign exchange market. What does this inflow mean? If 1.5 billion US uh, foreign exchange inflow is recorded into the Nigerian economy system, how much of impact can that be? Then the PCBN, a uh, few days after the, uh, the monetary policy uh, committee met, and brought out is uh, two consecutive meetings now, the first and the second. Interest rates were increased. Now, it came out 
and drop the bombshell on Nigerian banks, commercial banks, merchant banks, non-interest banks. They've been hit with a new policy to say, you have to go and check your capital base and increase it. But it gave them two years to do that. We'll be giving you the details and the table in a short while. But let's get a sense of it. Tonight, I'm not going to be boring you with the numbers and uh, the indicators and uh, economic terminologies, but I've got my guest, uh, uh, a friend here on China Salvation, who helps us to break down some of these issues. Paul Alaji, he is the chief economist at SPM uh, in, uh, uh, company. He joins us live from Ibadan. Thank you so much, Mr. Alaji, for joining us tonight on the program. First and foremost, let's get yeah, thank started. thank you so very much. How much of thank a you so very much for me. thank you so much indeed. How much of a good news is this 1.5 billion uh, foreign exchange inflow into the Nigerian economy? First and foremost, break it down for us. Well, what does this mean? That good. What does this I'll mean? I will tell you that it's good. What does the inflow mean? I will tell you it's good. Yeah. It means. It, I will also tell you what that means. First of all, it's good. It means that we have increased supply. That is inflow of USD into our country by at least 1.5 billion dollars. And the truth is that we can even do more. Of the seven points that we have mentioned to government via the media and also write-ups that government could adopt, clearly three of these policies have been adopted under the new central bank governor. And perhaps that is why we are seeing this result. So the implication is government naira now have some level of stability. Not so much. It's still really very fragile. And I can tell you that we cannot say we have huge confidence on this. It's like working on eggshell for now. And I believe that if we are consistent and we have the, we become audacious to follow through all the policies without hurting the economy badly, we will certainly see more inflow, and that can bring. I mean, that can take dollar down and even bring Naira further up. But whether we're going to have the requirement to do all of this is a different conversation. And I'll quickly tell you one of the things Central Bank has done. Before now, when people get remittances from abroad, they get it in dollar. Not all, some of them will take the money to the parallel market, which seems to be more attractive. And when they get such money, it does not leave the parallel market. And the interplay doesn't get find its way back to the banking sector. How much? Well, how do we determine what is our foreign reserve? It's not the money that is out of the banking sector. It is the money that is within the control of central bank, and the bank central bank controls that we can that will help us determine what we have in our foreign reserve. But unfortunately, the strategy before now would have been to either fight the BDC. But what central bank has now done would be that if you have foreign remittance or you are even paying money to the government, that money will stay with central bank, and the Naira equivalent is what will be released. And we talk of this with other activities. We have seen that more money is now being, I mean, staying or being trapped with the central bank. For lack of uh, the right word, I would say now stays with the central bank. We can now capture what actually is a true inflow into our economy. One of the reasons is that it is better to get such money from the Ahani uh, window or from FNBQ rather than going to parallel market. Today, the parallel market traded for 1,280. Uh, but when you check, I remember when I had an interview with you because some of these policies were implemented, were projected to get to 1,500 by March, and it surpassed. But federal government, and indeed the central bank, has now knows that we are dealing with a bigger issue. First thing that was done was to stop the NNPC for collecting uh, revenue on behalf of government. Because, of course, NNPC is not a bank. So we have a bank of government, in this case, Central Bank, to say all our currency, and in fact, all other currency, must come to the vote of Central Bank. All of these things add up. But Central Bank cannot, must also release the Naira equivalent, which is really not our problem. It's a problem, but not our problem. But right now, what we need is that that is happening. Central Bank has also increased interest rate. Even though that is a two-edged sword, if I have time, I will explain the implication. What that means, again, is that foreign investors can come to Nigeria, especially portfolio investors, and bring in their money. That will also will be, be, will be account for a sudden increase. We are seeing about $1.5 billion. So, but how much of all of these can we see? Of the seven important policy that must be implemented for us to see stability in the medium term, we are beginning to see some level of improvement. I cannot call it stability yet. Some level of improvement in the short term. Whether or not we will have the will to push this further, it's a different kettle of fish. So that is the implication. Supply side is increasing. I've also mentioned three reasons why you're having this, among other reasons that could be accountable for this improvement. 
But we, in all of these, we should know that it's still really very fragile because there's still a lot of people speculating on Naira who are hoping that Naira will, will fall again. And I might also quickly uh, answer a question you asked in your intro. Why is it that in spite of all the prices are still high, uh, people that have nothing to do with the dollar, how come that they said dollar is affecting them? The truth is a corn seller who may not have imported the corn and even the charcoal to, to roast the corn, it might have not imported it. But he lived in an economy where exchange rate is really poor, was weak, and also in an economy uh, where prices are really high. Inflation rate is over 31%. The central bank had projected it in the short term to increase to 32%, but it's still very hopeful that we come to 26%. But whether all of those will happen, it depends on policy, decisions, and our ability to combat food inflation, and more importantly, core inflation. Whether... Um, uh, the, the current strategy of increasing interest rate will be sufficient. It's another kettle of fish entirely. It's interesting. Uh, you will see that there is a frantic effort by the CBN to really strangle inflation and uh, snuff life out of it and ensure that it uh, takes air out of it such that it doesn't really affect this economy. You see those efforts that are being made. And, uh, you know, economy is something that you need to be careful it's like a yo-yo. You touch it, it begins to jump up and down. So you have to be very, very deliberate and strategic because the reactions will have ripples. Now, give us an understanding of um, a direct understanding of what implication the inflow will be to the average person, the woman who is selling corn on the, on the street, and perhaps maybe it will lessen the pressure on the, the, uh, on the, on the foreign exchange locally. Good. So what we are going to see in the next three to four months, I'm afraid we may not see this happen throughout the month of April, but maybe end of May, certainly June, July, if this persists, we will see that inflation will still grow, but at a reducing rate. So inflation will grow at a reducing rate. What that means is that for commodities that we, we buy on daily basis, we're going to see some level of improvement. Mind you, though, they are going to be very uh, small at the at the start, but if we continue uh, to implement more policies that will not hurt the economy, and I am not, rec I mean, recommending to central bank to further tighten or to increase interest rate. I think the central bank. So it's important for me to put that on the table that central bank should watch the 600 basis point that has been uh, that has been uh, implemented, that has been announced uh, in the last four weeks. It's important for us to watch that when it comes to May. Increasing it in May will be counterproductive. To what the central bank wants to achieve. Why? Because it will be anti anti growth. Two, it will crowd out investment, especially investment in real sector. And number three, it also crowd out employment. I think 600 percent the basis point within a month is perhaps the largest this economy has seen in four decades. So I think we should stay with that so that we don't say a patient that has uh, uh, an infection that should take antibiotics uh, three times a day for seven days. We said we want you to be here very quickly. What we want to do is to combine all the dosage and put in a smart 21 tablets, hoping that this kidney will not pack up. We need to be careful not to bring a policy rush into the system. I am not saying that uh, the kind of policy we are implementing are wrong, but we are saying that it is not just that it's wrong. The reason why a lot of people don't want to take local medicine, quote and unquote, what people call a go, is because of what will be the right prescription. So the central bank must know when it is too much or the time that they have to be sensitive to and when to introduce the policy. So here is it. There are a lot of effort going on by the central bank, no doubt. All economics now know that the central bank is doing everything to combat inflation. But the advice I give the central bank are this. One, you need to watch where some money supply is going to. Money supply is going more into public sector. When you look at the FAC account, over 300% increase in what goes to federal, state, and local government. And most of this money have not trickled down into the economy. Maybe again, Central Bank is trying to fight for upcoming minimum wage. And I've said definitely the minimum wage president will be announced by me will be more than 100,000 naira and it will be less than 200,000 naira. It could be one, it could be 150, it could be 155, it could be 180, but it will be somewhere in between. And I oh. tell you that when this happens, you are going to see a sporadic jump in inflation. So oh. what will fiscal authority do to ensure that we don't unnecessarily uh, raise inflation 
which would, of course, Central Bank will want to use monetary tool to correct in the coming period. So I can see the effort Central Bank is making. Mm -hmm. But more importantly, we also need to watch what National Bureau of Statistics is reporting. Bureau of Statistics is saying inflation is, 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 is the, the, the real cause of inflation or the, the main reason, the main driver of inflation is food inflation. How do we ensure we have food supply? For me, most of the problem we have in the Nigerian economy today, they are they can be solved using supply side strategy. Boost food supply, boost productivity, boost exports, and you are going to see more inflow into the economy. You are going to see that while supply demand remains the same, prices of commodity in the market will come down. Yeah, so but you know, this strategy is applicable when you really want to build a robust economy, an economy that will be resilient. But if you want to manage it just using few our tools within the power, I mean, within the power of classical economics, we may see some results in the short term, but in the long run, these may disappear and fizzle out completely. In, in one breath, do you think the Cardoso CBN is on the right track? Are they making the right decisions in the last days? Are you happy with what, what they are doing just in a breath? Yeah, so to talk about some of the things you have done, I would say it's an improvement from what we had in the previous time. I can see an improvement. Uh, with what Mr. Cardoso is doing. So uh, for, for now, I think he's on the right track. And areas where he was really aggressive, I've mentioned that, is about the rate. Improving bank uh, capital base, I think it's also the right thing to do. It is long overdue. And Mr. Cardoso became audacious in pulling this up. But the area of money which I must issue, because this we have, it will have a, a major effect on the economy, if we try to increase interest rate again. The right. numbers we are checking on the background is saying we need to take caution in increasing interest rate. We have done 600 basis points. It's high time we hold on and see what the impact will be within three to six months. All right. Uh, it's interesting. Let me take you to the issue of capitalization. Uh, my friend Shegun, uh, Shegun Igbinde, uh said that inflation is a very stubborn entity, but Cardoso is applying pressure from all ends Bank recapitalization is another pathway. Do you agree? Well, I completely agree with uh, uh, Mr. Shewoni Bide, who is also a friend, by the way. I agree with him. And when you look at the numbers, commercial bank that has international presence, 500 billion, national bank, uh, that's a commercial bank that with national spread, national license, 200 billion, regional bank, 50 billion, national, talking about uh, merchant bank, 50 billion, non-interest bank, 20, and even regional non-interest bank, will not be a student with another 10 billion requirement. What all, all of this mean? Central Bank is saying that we have a vision. The vision is to build one trillion dollar economy. And let me quickly explain that. When Nera was devalued at official window, our economy came down from $450 billion to $320 billion. Because at the end of the day, we're not going to compare Nigeria with Lagos. We will compare Nigeria with Ghana. We will compare Nigeria with Saudi Arabia. We will compare Nigeria with different countries of the world. And which currency are we likely to use is the dollar. The moment we say we now need more Naira to exchange for one dollar, what we have done is that the value of our economy that was what that was in Naira, when it converts to dollar term, it will surely go down. Now, how do we boost this? It's for us to put uh, confidence in the financial sector and put and make sure that our bank become more resilient. Perhaps this, this is what I've seen in this uh, policy that is issued. And anyone that wants to have new license by the central bank, starting from 1st of April, a number of days from now, 2024, we now need to comply with this. Those that have approval in principle, we also need to pay for the difference. All of this is saying we need banks to be strong. We want more capital projects to, to come into this system. Well, another question of fish many people we ask is at what interest rates are we going to do this? So that is why, as much as we are building on one hand, we should take a lot of caution not to destroy from the other. In your, in, in, in just uh, uh, to wrap up this conversation, um, good news, isn't it, for our economy? On good, that news, for me, watch, good news. The last three the weeks. Good news. Good news. It's, it's huge good news. But the implementation, we have to take a lot of caution so that we don't destroy more business entity. But overall, I will tell you the truth. This is good news. I've been expecting this to happen three years ago. And I must say that I was quite happy when I saw that uh, decision by the central bank, at the, I think yesterday or so, when he, he, he made it to the news that it has now been announced. So for me, it's good news. The last time we saw a major milestone 
improvement like this was in 2004, when 31st December 2025 was issued as a deadline for banks, especially commercial banks, to uh, take that lead, lead step. So it's a bold step by uh, Mr. Yemi Kadosu, and it seems to hope that Nigeria Bank will, of course. And I can tell you, a lot of our banks, we qualify non-interest merchants and, of course, commercial banks, both with the one with national and international uh, uh, and international presence. Yeah, I work with few of them, and I can tell you that most of these banks, we do that. And in all of this, it will make our economy to become resilient. Will it have implication on inflation? Yes, it will have implication on inflation. But we also need to let people know so that we don't we don't hide our face, you know, in in, in monetary in this in the, in, in, in the thin air of monetary policy. That there are things we must do for this economy to be sustainable mm. and for this economy not to be not 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 not, not to be destroyed uh, by by some other uh, some other issues that are right. not really connected to monetary uh, uh, monetary points. One is we need to solve the issue of insecurity which, of course, is hindering food supply. Two, so we also need to do a lot with uh, logistics and food uh, distribution. That is, social network is important. And Mr. President and state government must stay clear uh, and understand that, yes, you may have a central bank government that is really agile and taking all decisions where we think it's not doing well. We have mm -hmm. said it. But yeah. overall, I would say that we we'll give Mr. Cardoso, yeah. with some of these policies I've seen in recent days, seven out of ten. Yeah. I would say he has really, really done well. That's Just a few mark. areas I yeah. think him and his team all we right. need to watch. In, the but, but, but in all of these, uh, I, I need to go now, Paul. Uh, in all of these, is there a possibility because of this uh, capitalization policy? Do you see some banks not being able to meet up and some kind of mergers or some, some kind of coming together that we have seen in the past years? when banks are not able to meet yeah. up their capitalization uh, 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 obligations? Yes, I, I think few banks, less than 20% of banks across board, uh, uh, across the three categories, may not be able to meet up. This is our uh, immediate report. This is our immediate observation that about 20% of the banks may not be able to meet up, but they will have options. One is to sell uh, the banks to those who want to, new investors. With that is why Central Bank is giving 24 calendar months for them to do that. Two, they could also merge with another financial institution that is robust. Three, even the banking halls and all of those may not be a waste at the end of the day because one bank with larger capacity may acquire or may match as the case may be, and you might see a stronger banking system in Nigeria. Because for you to have a robust economy, you certainly must build it on a strong foundation right. of a large banking system. And I think this is what I will be seeing in the coming period. Paul Alaje is an economist and the chief economist at the SPM Professionals. Thank you so much indeed for your time. And I appreciate it breaking Thank it down. Thank you so much, Father. Thank you. Some good news. I, I mean, it's been some uh, woes and some dooms and glooms with um, uh, the economy, but we're seeing some directions in the right, uh, some steps in the right direction. Hopefully, uh, there will be sustainability in all of that. We go on a break, and when we come back, Chief Olabode Judge is a member of the Board of Trustees of the People's Democratic Party. He will be joining me tonight, and we'll also dissect what uh, uh, President Tunubu said yesterday. Do not curse your nation. You might not like the face of a leader, but don't destroy your country. Plus, the troubles within the PDP. They've also spoken about Chief Bodeja. You'll be answering to some of these issues for us after this break of one. Join us again. So let's get back to the conversation, everyone. Um, Chief Olabode George joins us live from Lagos. Thank you so much, Chief George, for joining us tonight. Uh, but let me My be... pleasure. Yeah. Yes. Uh, happy Good Friday to you. Uh, well, let's begin the conversation mm. uh, from one the President, okay. uh, uh, Muhammad Ubu, uh, President Bola Tinubu said yesterday when he was meeting with traditional rulers, and he made it clear uh, about what Nigerians need to do and say about their country. Take a listen to the president. It is with God-given talent and resolve of all of us to say that we will overcome the challenges and turn it to prosperity by the grace of God. We win. 
When we turn it around, the prayer is in your mind. Pray for our country. Educate our children. All the members of our church and mosque, the sermon we give to them is important. We don't condemn your own nation. Me, you, man, and our father will say, no matter how slippery the bottom of your child, leave the bead there. This is your country. Don't condemn it in sermons. All right, that's the president, Bala Tembu speaking about Nigerians speaking well of their nation. Chief George, let me allow, uh, allow you to respond or speak about what's your reaction to the position of the president? Um, you know, let me thank you for inviting me today. Today is a very special day in the Christian world. And, you know, Today was that day that uh, our Lord Jesus Christ was crucified and uh, because he died to carry away our sins. And the beauty of it is that in three days' time, he will resurrect. And so we, we've been all fasting in the last 40 days. And so we must be honest with ourselves. We must be clear in our minds. There is an adage in my part of the world that if heavens will fall, who would escape? Of course, uh, again, there is also this adage that Agbara Tiba Adura Lumba. In other words, prayers are very important to the life of any nation or any individual homes. And uh, so if he is now talking to the people, yeah, we must all be very prayerful. It is important. Uh, let us be prayerful. And the people who have been elected to manage the resources of the land for the benefit of the people. They themselves must reflect the, the, the goodness of the Almighty God. Because Ruhari, and I hope that is really deep rooted in his mind, appealing to our people that let us be prayerful, don't dishonor your nation, don't talk bad about this, don't bring evil to the country. That Those are all appeals. What should follow is let there be some methodology, economically, physically, to ensure that you, you give the people, especially young people who have no jobs, there's no future, there's no hope, that is more killing. That's what drives people in the opposite direction to create mayhem everywhere. And once there is abject poverty in the land, people will remain angry. I feel for our people. And I will want him to translate what he has said which is quite heartwarming, to translate it into giving to the people a lot of hope. If there is no hope, when you wake up in the morning, you don't even know where you are going to go, There's, you're not running for any job, you're not doing anything, you to get a meal in a day was hell. People will resort in different directions. So, I, I accept what he has done. I am going to advise that he should translate very sensible statement, translate it to meet the needs of Nigerians. Um, we've suddenly found ourselves uh, in this mess. 
And I, I, I listened to the gentleman who spoke before you called him an economist. Uh, economists, they are not exact scientists. You know, if it had been in my own profession, engineering, you would define, you would redesign and say between plus and minus this, whatever you think for stability, it will be there. But it's very difficult in economics. And like uh, one of my old school teachers used to say, that you can hardly find a man with a single hand in economics. They will say on one hand it is this, on another hand it is that. So I will plead, you have told us to be to remain calm. You are fixing it. We are all watching. We will continue to pray, reduce the tension in the land. This insecurity is a major issue that this nation must face. I want to plead, there is no way the system of governance, that constitution we are running, can resolve the problems of this nation. It can't. Take the security part of it. What is the total population of the uh, federal police? How can they effectively manage communities? It's impossible. So, the need to revisit the Constitution and approach the, the, the seriousness of having to establish state police in each state that will complement the national police. We're not asking for too much because the local police will be able to manage every community. They will speak their language. They know their culture. They know the norms. They know who lives in house A or house B. And so you can effectively give and guarantee those people safety of their lives and properties. So it, it, it is not just to talk. That constitution is also a major drawback. Imagine Lagos State. The, the, the largest populated state in this country, electorally, it is the largest electoral state in this country. We have only 20 local governments. Ogun State, that is next door, they are not comparable with the population and the people and the, they also have 20 local governments. Is that justifiable? And Kanu, which is the next largest city in uh, state in Nigeria, has 44 local governments. Then Jigawa that was created from Kano also has 24, 26 local governments. And every month they all head to Abuja. Local government draws money from the federation account. So where is justice? Mm. Where is fairness? To Let judge. the people. Yeah. Yeah. Let me ask, I know you are, it, it, you are, you are not the fairest of critic of Bola Tinubu. Uh, and uh, yes. let me ask you, uh, you, you heard what the chief uh, mm. economist said earlier, that it looks like we are having yeah. some steps in the right direction in terms of the economy. Do you think that the president is making some policies that is leading Nigeria into the right direction? You know, like I said to you, you know, Economy on economists, it, it's not an exact science. It is not a science, you know, or like in engineering, when you make a design, you say between certain limits, this will happen. They cannot be affirmative in the issue of the economy. So it will take time before we feel all these new policies they are talking about. Uh, it's not something you can do in a day. But as long as we, are, we have examined the methodologies in the past that led us into hell, and they are now revisiting them, looking at the various indices and seeing how much they can do, I will plead also, let's wait. Let's wait and see what they are doing. You know, my if I'm rounding up in a short sentence of what the uh, the president said, 
He's asking people, trust me, we will get it. And now we suggested he should have an economic team. He now has has uh, the economic team that he's looking for. So we will wait and see. Because some of those people in the economic teams belonged to the old past themselves. They were part of the people who 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 who, who, who drove us in the wrong direction. So I pray that God Almighty, on this very special day in Christendom, will hear our prayers and let it go straight into the heart of those who are managing us, that there is need to be honest with Nigerians, there is need to, to make sure that we, they, they themselves will see if you are putting in a very positive approach to problem solving. So I, I wish also the best of luck. Uh, it is still theoretical. They are doing this today, they are doing that tomorrow. There are other external forces that will still affect this that were not mentioned. But whatever it is, uh, I, I, I am also asking the other Nigerians, let us be calm. Let us see the direction in which this thing will go. Take us from the doldrums of hell and be honest and truthful to Nigerians. Because, you know, there is this story... Uh, um, uh, uh, the, 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 the oil uh, sector have been shrouded in some kind of security or the other. All of a sudden, you, you know, what happened to our crude oil? Why are we importing crude oil for to service uh, Aliko's uh, uh, um, um, uh, refinery? There are these things that I don't understand. But for whatever it is, they have accepted that they must resolve this crisis, let's give them time. All right. you, know, uh, you know, very soon it will be one year. And I join them to say, Agbara Kigba, Adura Lumba. So we'll see. All right. Literally, you, you say, literally, you mean power does mm. not happen, prayer happens, no. okay, literally, if I get it. But let me take you into the politics. Prayer for, oh, yeah. Prayers. Yeah. Let me take you into mm. the politics of the yeah. PDP. Uh, before I go to the national level, mm. it does look like things are mm. not really looking well in Lagos State, where you are a leader uh, in the state. And mm. uh, there was a press conference. Mm. I I'd like you to listen to what uh, uh, a former senatorial mm. candidate, uh, uh, Mr. Adewale, uh, he said in that press conference in Lagos, and was making some direct uh, inference to you and what really happened in the state. Take a listen to him, Chief Judge. We went to the party at the national level last April, laying our complaint and seeking an explanation as to why they collected our money, made us to waste our time and resources, and only for them to ask the people not to vote for us. But we never got any response from them till date. As we speak, nobody from the party has deemed it fit to call us either for explanation or even sympathize with our plight on our loss, even though it was engineered by the actors of the party. As insensitive as this set of leaders are, they have not shown any remorse. Their position was also corroborated by the LGA chairman forum, who confirmed that they received orders from above to work against us and the party in the last general election. We have therefore instituted a suit, for, for, a suit first to the court to compare the party to expel all the actors who openly work against us. All right, then. So you heard, uh, Chief Judge, you heard what uh, Errol and uh, Mr. Adewale said there. How do you react to some of these things, uh, some of them, uh, weighty? You know, uh, so let me tell you, I'm almost, almost 80 years old, been in this party since its inception. What that young man was saying is a load of crap. And it is an infra dignity at him for me to respond to the, the insanity he is exhibiting there. He was talking absolute nonsense. 
who went to Abuja to do what in Abuja? Who he contested. I even assisted him when they were doing the primaries. The young man who wanted to compete against him is from Badagri division, from Badagri local government. I, I appealed to that young man that let's have less fight during primaries so that the election can be smooth. The young man, Ogugwe is his name, he accepted. It was an appeal to him. And this guy got the ticket. He's talking about uh, elders. May he, I, I don't want to curse him, but I, I, I regard it as, uh, uh, you know, you meet all kinds of characters in politics. If he was when I was in the military, <laughs> I know what I would do to him. He's talking arrant rubbish. Who went to Abuja to collect money from who? He's talking trash. And this is why we had said that the party, we must get the party, <laughs> excuse me, back to what it what the founding fathers established it to achieve. These kind of clowns cannot be part of the, the real owners and managers of the party. When did he join us? What has he done before? There was a time he ran from Lagos again, ran to his state in Ekiti. We wanted to contest uh, election, governorship election there. He came and told me, sir, I'm going there. I said, I wish you the best of luck. At the end, when he was beating uh, Silly, he rushed back to Lagos. You know, so so these are not these are issues that we we the party haven't experienced the the lackluster approach but, but, to but the Chief preparation Judge, to the yeah, last election. He's not the only one yes. that is aggrieved in Lagos. Uh, the no, governorship no, candidate of the PDP is, in Lagos is also aggrieved. Uh, and he's also been speaking. Shewu, Shewu, that young man, yeah, who, whom you call the, the gubernatorial candidate, I, I listened, I heard what he said. Drawing me to talk at their level is an insult. What does he know about PDP? I am a life board of trustee member. And you know what a trustee is in any organization. Legally, we own and manage the assets of the party on behalf of the people. So what he is talking about, he got the ticket, went to Abuja, how they managed it. You see, there was a major, major mistake made during the procedure of uh, the planning for the national election. But I will not sit down in the public and open the, f the, 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 the field they brought. I remember the last time I, I, when I listened to the way they were doing these things, I walked out of the meeting because I knew it was going to take us to the doldrums of hell. Look, the founding fathers of our party haven't realized that there is this issue of majority tribes and minority tribes that had plagued this country since 1959, the first time we had an election. And they then came up with a, a, a procedure that was brilliant. Now, they divided Nigeria into six geopolitical zones and had the six top positions in the country. The president, number one, the vice president, number two, the senate president, number three, the speaker, the, the speaker of the national assembly, number four, the secretary to the government, and the national chairman of the party. Six positions, six zones. Section seven, subsection three C of our constitution stated very emphatically and clearly that there must be rotation and zoning of all these positions. 
You know, what did, what happened? What happened the last time? General Buhari, who, who was president, spent eight years. Is he from Lagos State or is he from Calabar? He is from Castilla. So he had finished his own term. The Northerner had done it. The most sensible thing for our party was to ensure that this position is rezoned. Rezoned to the South. And that was where there was this break in communication. That is why we would have sat down rather than somebody thinking, we, I have it all. If you don't like it, yeah. get out. Chief Judge, the, yeah. the, the, the people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I like the, us the, to this young man you are talking yeah. about. Yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to talk about him because he he is an ingrate. It is. It is uh, uh, like I said. It's an infra dignitatem for me to sit and be explaining. The party has a procedure, and we will go through that procedure. All right, Chief Judge. Yeah. Let me, yeah. We are sure in our minds yeah. that are here like a mole. We will sort them out. You know, it, 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 it's, an, it's an insult. Chief Judge, to let, be us, telling let us anchor. the landlord to leave his house. Yeah. Let, let's anchor on this. Huh? I, I'm, I'm being told I have about 35 or 40 yeah. seconds. But now there is a justice for oh, the uh, national uh, chairmanship uh, seat of the PDP. What do you make yeah. of that? Mm, and mm. how do you think the party can handle that? You know, you see, the man who was the chairman left in some circumstances. That's how you. And so somebody must replace him. Temporarily, the chairman, uh, the deputy national chairman not took that position. And he's been trying to reorganize, to make sure uh, we, re we, we, we will amend, we will resort to normalcy. He's trying with his team. But then the North Central eh, zone is saying, yes, that was the position given to us. We are not dead and we are not out of the party. So if one goes, the replacement must also come from that same state. That can be handled. But it shouldn't be handled in a manner that it will further divide the party. All right. I get, I get really angry when I see people struggling dangerously for positions. They, they, they look, apart from visiting the constitution of the nation, we ourselves must calm down and manage the resources of this country for the betterment of our people. Yeah. That should not create a All hell right. of a problem. All right. The Benue people, they must meet. Let them nominate one person All right. Keep from there, yeah. and he can take it up. Because he has a hell of a lot of sorting out to do at the national. Chief Olabade Judge is a member of mm. the Board of mm. Trustees of the People's Democratic Party. Well, thank you so much indeed for your time mm. tonight and sharing your thoughts on this Good Friday. Thank you so much indeed. I appreciate it. Thank you very much, you. Thank you I so wish much. you all the very best. Happy Sun uh, Easter Sunday too. Thank you so much. And may the blessing of God be all on, on, on all of us in Nigeria. Amen. And guide us. Thank, Thank you so you. much, everyone, for watching. And that's how far you can go tonight on the program. Many thanks for watching. Happy Good Friday. And I wish you the very best in this very good season of Easter. Bye for now, everyone.